Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. Join me as I attempt to infect everything inside with this deadly combination of fawn and necrotic grips in this PvE warlock build. Using prismatic as the foundation for the build, this so called plague build is so powerful in its ability to spread damage over time, it will genuinely affect everything it touches. How great is that? So tell me in the comment section, are you a fawn main or a Austro Striga main when pairing this with necrotic grips? And with that out of the way, let's make a start. A start with the general aim and the exotic of the build, our aim is to make sure we are able to retain our poison effect as often as possible by being aggressive within the build, while also making full use of our transcendence energy form to go even harder with the poison combo in mind. For this, we will be using Nocota Grip and Fawn. A start with Nocota Grip with his exotic effect, Grasp of the Devourer, it states, damaging a target with melee poison them dealing increased damage over time. Defeating a poison target spreads the condition. Using this with form or Ostra Striga is pretty much the go-to method that everyone relies on since these are the two best weapons in terms of spreading your poison quickly and efficiently. At the same time, combining this with Arcane Needles will provide another level of debuff that's only achievable from the Strand class and is quite powerful when further activated in your transcendent state. With the right fragments being used, which I will be showing, you'll see why these two exotics are actually perfect for Prismatic as a whole. Our second exotic is Fawn, with his exotic effect named Mark of the Devourer, which states, Valence pierce targets and deal damage over time. Kills with this weapon and leave behind remnants. Although more of a PvP weapon with its given history, it does go well in PvE content when using its accompanying exotic armor piece. As hand cannons can be used as anti-champion mods this season, it's going to be an absolute must-have for laying down consistent damage on single targets. Combine this with faster of grace and solitude, and you pretty much have made a build with literally zero effort. So for the aspects and fragments, we have the following. A feed of void, where defeating targets with any ability kill will activate devour. Helion, where activating your class ability will produce a solar mortar that will lob flaming projectiles at distant targets and scorch them. Fast of Grace, where defeating targets with kinetic weapons grants you bonus transcendence energy. Defeating targets with your super grants you and allies bonus energy. Fast of Solitude, where a landing rapid precision hits emit a severing blast that reduces enemies' damage output. Fast of Hope, where while having the elemental buff, your class ability regenerates faster. Fast of Balance, where rapidly defeating light targets grants melee energy. Rapidly defeating dark targets grants grenade energy. And Fast of Dominance, where your Void Grenade weakens targets, while your Art Grenade jolts them. The most easiest way to build into anything connect base is to always rely on Fast of Grace and Solitude for the ease of access, and effectiveness across the board. Since Dark Transcendence Energy will be relied on via Arcane Needle's usage, you don't need to add Fast of Sacrifice this time round, as the Unraveling Effect will spread from one target to another when combined with our Poison Effect. This is how you can quickly build up that part of the meter effectively. The rest of the fragments are the common run-of-the-mill setup most people will run when selecting Warlocks, such as Balance and Hope. Dominance on the other hand can stay if you wish for that extra debuff being applied for your grenades, but both Faster Protection and Dawn both go hard if you prefer a bit more freedom in terms of your movements. For the mods and stats, we have both Resilience and Discipline mods as our top priority, with Strength also playing a part. The strength here will be low since both our super and transcendence energy state will easily regenerate what we have lost. If you intend to use a melee as often as possible, then I would advise having a secondary weapon with Pugliss to help expand this feature a bit more. Resilience with ours at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. No key mods are needed for this area as having devourer is enough. Discipline with ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 16 cooldown via Vortex Grenade. Either Storm or Vortex are both fine to have here, since the Dominance Fragment is active, but as the endgame setup, having debuff Vortex Grenades will be very helpful against bosses and champions, which we will face. Since Grenades won't need too much mods to support its gains, expanding your other mods such as Strength will help big time down the line. Impact Induction times 1 for a 12% Grenade Regen, Momentum Transfer times 2 for a 17% melee buff, Invigoration for a 10% melee ability regen and distribution for a 4% all ability buff will be suitable for the build. 
I assume strength is my weakest in terms of passive means, so it's best you invest here if this is the same for you. Additional mods which are highly recommended, we have the following. Kinetic Siphon for creating all the power via matching kinetic weapon. Reaper for creating all the power after using your class ability and then getting a kill. Charged up times one for a plus one armor stacks we carry. Kinetic weapon surge times one for a 10% kinetic weapon buff, although times two is also fine. Ashes of assets for a super energy regen via grenades. And lastly, heavy finder, reserves and scavenger ammo mods are highly recommended for this heavier we are using. So as we have covered our exotic prime weapon, I would then advise you pick a super weapon for the build. These are all optional, but do hold some benefits towards the build. A secondary, I went with the Callus Mini tool with Threat Detector and Incandescent as the main perks. Used for breaking barriers, spreading scorch and increased mobility. The following is great weapon in use and all sorts of content with how fast and fluid these current perks are. If you are a free to play player and want something similar to this, then the new Perfect Pits SMG can be gotten via Zavala and is near identical to what I currently have. Heavy, we have Song of Ear Ute with Target Lock and Rewind Rounds as perks. Another fantastic weapon to have since this Cursed Foul weapon trait becomes active on melee kills, which is where the build can further excel as damage in GMs or Master Raids, for example. Ideally, a Rewind Rounds is a must for machine guns because of how the ammo you get back can be life or death in some situations. Now, free to play players, if you want something similar as well, then get the Swarm from Zavala under the Legacy Gear option. It's a high impact frame, so it will fire a bit slower, but it does come with Vorpal for mini bosses, champions, and bosses, and it also hits a bit more harder. So, everyone here has seen their own version of the Prismatic Poison build being done before. But this one here is more compatible for the new light -like players and is very end game worthy for the traditional players as shown with the equipment. Although many would say use Monte Carlo so you can build up your mini charges and use them more often, I would actually advise against that if you intend to use them for anything more end game and above. The build is designed to not rely on our mini too much as we want to include the ability to use the build wherever and however you like. The build is designed for maximizing our poison effect by spreading it far and wide, and the best way to do that is through our weapon and melee of choice. However, with Prismatic available, we will invest everything we have to get Chancellor's energy up and running, as the best way to spam our melee charges, unless we like, is through this one method here. As shown, the Transcendent Sting combined with knockout Grips, Thorn, and Unraveling via Arcane Needles can absolutely wipe out an entire area with how often we can spam it. This overall is how the build would excel in other activities without the need of melee regenerating weapons or perks. On the other hand, I can see this being a downgrade for those who wish to use their melee a lot more often, which is possible with the given mods available, just not at a rapid pace they may want. In simple terms, the core grip with any weapon of Sorum is going to be perfect for any subclass you have in mind since its overall nature is to enhance your poison effect by 10 folds. With Prismatic being introduced, it allows our build to not only lean harder into build, but make it overall more worthwhile once our transcendent state is active and ready. Simply, this build is worth its weight in gold, and if you are a long-term player or a free-to-play player, this is probably one of the best ways to go about and use Prismatic to its fullest. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. While if you enjoyed the content and want more of these videos, then leave a like and a sub while you're here. A dim link for the build is located below in the pinned section, and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.